Welcome to the Cube Conversation here at the Cube Studios in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the Cube and co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. We're here with Shlomi Benhaim, who's the founder and CEO of JFrog, um, hot startup. Um, asked him to come in to chat about his business. Uh, in the DevOps space, uh, we see him at a lot of shows. Your company's doing well. We love the marketing. The frog thing is great. I love it, uh, very cool. But there's a lot of real serious action going on in the enterprise and in the cloud and, and in emerging tech, whether it's AI or machine learning, whether it's Internet of Things. Developers are front and center in the marketplace and there's a boatload of noise out there. It was like, you know, this approach, this approach, I mean, there's a lot of different approaches, but at the end of the day, the devs are driving a lot of innovation. You guys are at the center of it, so welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Pleasure so first being. question for you, what did, just take a minute to talk about what you guys do, JFrog. Why, what's your company? What's your business do you do? What, what are you guys up to? What's your, what are you, what's, your, what's your deal? Yeah, so the way I think that the community uh, will describe us would be that we are the binaries people. We are taking care of your binaries. And uh, as you know, in the DevOps world, everything you do, you do with your binaries, with your software artifacts. So I, I heard uh, some of the community members call us the uh, database of uh, DevOps. And uh, we are the providers of Artifactory, Bintray, X-Ray, and Mission Control, which take care of your uh, binaries, managing them, host them, distribute them, and secure them. Open source um, event we were at, we saw you guys, because I, I was doing all the interviews and you guys were right on the edge there. I think you guys got some nice background images off the Cube videos. But it was really interesting. I mean, the trend is your friend, as the saying mm -hmm. goes. Um, and the number of open source uh, projects is increasing. The actual uh, lines of code is exponentially going to grow from like 22 million to like 200, 400 million lines of code over the next couple of years. I mean, that's a hockey stick. So more developers are coming in. Not old school like me that have no, that <laughs> built their own stuff from scratch. There's a lot of Lego blocks. In fact, Jim Zemlin said that 10% of the code will probably be original ideas and differentiation. 90% of most of the code will be a code sandwich, <laughs> which I believe, I think that's a legit direction. How do you guys fit into that trend, and what, what does that mean for your business? Because I could imagine uh, there's a ton of GitHub stuff going on, tons of forking, tons of projects. We've got blockchain catching the world by storm. There is a massive developer tsunami going on. Oh, yeah. How do you guys help them? So it's very interesting, you know, when we started JFrog, um, actually my co-founder, Joab Landman, started by providing developers with a very dummy, basic solution to proxy, public repositories like Maven Central. And it was not about the code. For the first time, it was about the binaries. Code is great, and the line of code, as you, as you said, it's, it's going to go enormous. But what happened is that when you need to automate, when you need to rebuild, when you need to release faster, you go down to the binary level, to the software artifact level, and guess what? no one took care of your binaries before. You, was just, you were just throwing your binaries to your version control yeah. or a file store, right? You, maybe you were hosting them. They were messy and it's like a kid with their room. It's all the stuff spread all over the place. Yeah, the, Where's that binary? No one keep track of it. Nobody care about that. <laughs> but this is the, the one thing that you keep consuming, keep building with, keep uh, recompiling. And uh, in the era of DevOps is the one asset that you need to automate and reuse. Yeah. So, um, this is, this is where So the core get. problem, if I get this right, is, is that, you know, I mean, compiling is going to be, I mean, if you think of DevOps, it's, it's infrastructure as code, as the phrase goes, mm -hmm. as we always say. And programming infrastructure is what dev guys want to do. They don't want to be in the business of, you know, switch and configuration, getting in the routers and the network. They want it to be just one layer of, of resource. Serverless is a great trend for you. More and more developers are going to love this. Yeah. So they want to program. So when you're programming, the inherent next step is, where's the code? Who's compiling it? it doesn't need to be compiled. Is that kind of the core problem that there's more and more stuff going on under the hood that needs to be managed? Is that growing your part of your business solution or is the problem just lost binaries? What's the core problem? It's, it's a perfect question. First of all, we, we are providers. We are the providers of the only universal solution. So binaries are not just for Java developers. They are not just for Py Python developers. They are not just for .NET developers. They are not just for Docker users and the way you package it. Binaries happens between your Git and your CI server, let's say Jenkins, Git and Jenkins, and your Kubernetes. Something happened between those two sides, your, your orchestration tool and your 
code repository too. In this land is where, where binaries play a very significant role and this is where we are uh, a major player. So is the problem error prone, uh, error prone in that zone? And so in the zone it's like the wild west, it's a like black hole if you will, mm -hmm. think, think about it, mm -hmm. what you're saying, if I get it right. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in there. Is it, is it mismanagement? What's the core thing that you guys are going to do there? Tones, tones of binaries, too much uh, public repositories that the community cannot rely on. You need to manage and host your own binaries, the one that you create yourself, and to provide, and this is the last trend we see in the market, big organizations need to provide DevOps as a service to their own developers. Yeah. So they need to host this, this very important asset that we call software artifact and binaries, or Docker images, yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, a lot of great trends going on. Obviously containers and Kubernetes you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, let's get into those, that's driving a lot of change. Certainly containers has been around for a while. You know, whether you call it wrappers or whatever, it's a great magical thing, we love containers. Kubernetes really gets the trend right now. If you look at the Google trends, you see Kubernetes yes. has got so much more traction than containers, although I'm not saying one's more relevant than the other. Certainly orchestration's important, mm -hmm. okay? Linking and loading all these, these containers together. Why is Kubernetes um, accelerating the binary conversation? Is it because more rapid development's going on, more programmability is going on? Why is Kubernetes impacting the binaries uh, components uh, more now than ever? So putting aside the need for automating and integrating it's all, this all orchestration uh, um, solution requires some, some work on the binary level, but if you think about what Kubernetes is trying to solve, or, or what the containers overall are trying to, to solve is, is a better, faster release, better, faster deployment, better, faster delivery. And then you can do it only if you will combine the power of the developers and the power of the machine mm -hmm. and, uh, and release faster. Yeah. And this is what we say in JFOM, yeah. release fast or die, because it's all about how fast can you release. Before we get into some of the product specific stuff, I want to ask you some pointed questions on that. I want to ask you about automation. And so, AI is obviously hot, I love AI. Even though it's hyped up, it still promotes great software development. Machine learning really is where the meat on the bone is there. So machine learning and automation, bots, whatever you want to look at it, there's an opportunity to actually create adaptive code. How do th that new software paradigm affect binaries? Because I can almost imagine that if you got a bot going wild, you know, it could screw up the binaries. Completely. So can you comment on that, that area? I mean, obviously we want more bots, because automation is a good thing on one level, but how do you guys look at that market as an opportunity, as a challenge? What's, the, what's that, that whole yeah. AI thing look like? Well, if, if we take a step back, I think, I think the DevOps started with the need to automate and release faster. And, um, and it was like the playground of developers, we need a better integration. We need a continuous integration. We need a better delivery, we need a continuous delivery. It, it, and if you think about it now, in, in 2020 perspective, uh, you understand that this was all milestones. The next big challenge is continu continuous updates. People like me, people like you, just want their devices and machines to be updated. Yeah. They and don't secure, I mean look at Equifax. And secure. I mean Equifax is a great example. Absolutely. They didn't update the code. It, and it's flowing, and it's just happening and, and, and secured. Yeah. And um, in the world of automation, the world of AI, I think that the big challenge, or the next big challenge of DevOps is how can I create a continuous update machine, which is also secured, and software update will just flow. It will not be something that you press, I agree, I reboot, and do any kind of crazy stuff in order just to get your software update. And it's more about the user experience of all of us. It's not just uh, developers and DevOps companies anymore. Yeah, that's a great vision, by the way, I love that. And it should work like that. And programmable infrastructure for DevOps should be programmable and always available and highly reliable. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg used to have the saying, move fast, break stuff. That's not a DevOps <laughs> ethos, by the way. I mean, they built their own DevOps, then he kind of quickly waffled back to move fast, be reliable, because you know he, re got, he got some religion on, on ops. Um, so, totally get that. Let's kind of go into today's world, so that kind of mm -hmm. gives us a little future view. What is a use case for a customer? Take me through the day in the life of a, of a, of a customer that's using JFrog. What are their problems? What are some of the things that are, are burning in their office? Where's the smoke? What's the problem that they have that they need to take care of their binaries? Sprawl of code? Just mismanagement? I mean, what are some of the signals? Share with your, your view there. Yeah, so, so it starts with the fact that it's not your developer anymore that builds software. You have uh, a CI server though that 
never goes to, um, to a lunch break, <laughs> never take a, a break with Facebook, which by the way, it's a great company, but uh, sometimes disruptive <laughs> during the time, uh, during the work time, and you keep building and building like crazy. Your CI server keep producing. It's an binaries. always on code machine, it's basically. A, it's, That's what the it's environment is. It's a binaries is. machine, binaries. And, it's, and it's being built 24 by 7. And, and yes, you use just a portion of it, but, but you have to host and manage all of it. And if you will host it in your version control, it will explode. If you will put it in a file store, it will not be something Explode you because manage. of capacity or? Because you cannot do any cleanups on a version control. Not Git or Subversion or Perforce or any of them. You don't, you don't do cleanups on version control. Yeah, so hygiene is an issue. Yes, plus integration. You need to integrate with your ecosystem, plus promotion. You need to <laughs> allow and automate promotion of, of the specific uh, bytes that you build. So, that's, so people, that's why people call you the database, or I would even say the brains of binary, so you got to keep track of the goods, if you will. It's like the, the crown jewel is the binary. Right. If, if, you, if I get that right. Okay, so let's take it to the next level. So you got a good hygiene, you got good stuff going on. What are you guys doing specifically that gives you a differentiation in the market? Because is it software, is it, the, is it hardware? What is the JFrog differentiation? So I think that the first thing that happened to us was that we realized that binaries is for everyone. If you remember JFrog slogans from 2010, it was binaries for the people. We felt like we are leading the revolution of taking care of your binaries. <laughs> and, um, and therefore we decided that whatever we build, our philosophy base, our concept will be universal. So we started with the Java community, Maven and Gradle, and then the, the .NET community with Nougat, and then when it came to, a, to be more like a DevOps industry in 2013 or 14, was it? Yeah, uh, yeah roughly. 2008 then, to 2014 was really the cloud Arati, and then it grew, and then it matured a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and the combination of yeah. Dev and Ops and IT, yeah. and then we started to, to support packages like Debian and RPM, hmm. YAM repositories, Docker registry. We were the first Docker registry in the market. Yeah. You were riding the wave from the beginning. Yes. You were right there riding the binary wave with the cloud growth, native cloud growth, public cloud right. growth, big time. Which, by the way, had a lot of iterations quickly. Which is also one of our differentiators. We are the only hybrid providers for, for your binary solution. We have it in the cloud, any cloud, or, or, um, or on-prem. Who's the competition? So, it's a very good question. On, on a niche level, we have companies like uh, Docker that provide a Docker registry. Um, um, we have CoreOS that provide Docker registry. By the way, anyone in the market now want to have a Docker registry, a container yeah. registry. Um, on the Java Maven domain, Sonatype provide uh, Nexus, which is uh, a binary repository manager for, for Java, for Maven builds. Um, NPM provide the solution for uh, NPM. But if you think about a universal solution that supports- Those were siloed, platform specific exactly. binaries. Yes. You're taking much more of a holistic, horizontally scalable, any binary, any time, Management we, exactly. We don't do the before and after, but in the binaries okay. world, we want to be one solution for all. All right. So I, I get the whole registry thing. I love that positioning. Yes. Just a dumb question: When someone's coming in and managing and manipulating the registry, how do you guys handle that piece? How do you know that a Java request coming in from a Java registry? Do you guys have a front end to this thing? Is it, is it your software? So how do you guys manage the the integration of requests to and from the binaries? The read and write to the yeah. repository, mm -hmm. you mean? So Artifactory is a very sophisticated repository, if I may say. It's built more like a database. It's based on a checksum mechanism and not just, um, you know, um, a basic file store. It's, it, it can- You scale. verify it. Yes. Coming in on the front end. Right. On the, the incoming the, read. The, the proxy machine, caching, managing, hosting, and distributing, it's, it's all happening in Artifactory. And performance is, is good? No problems well, with we performance. are the only uh, <laughs> provider that has a highly available solution with over 4,000 customers, so I guess it is. Yeah, you're doing good, <laughs> you got a smile. Yeah, I see you at the shows. You got a good reputation, so it's great to have you come in. Um, I guess I wanted to just take a minute to pause, because I know we're having a great conversation. I can talk about CI servers until the cows come home. I love one of my favorite topics, DevOps. Um, as people who've been following me since 2008 know, I love the cloud, cloud native uh, vision from day one. But there's a lot of people out there who don't know what the hell a binary is. So take a minute, 
and explain what is a binary and why is it such an important thing right now in context to open source growth, more developers coming in, context to enterprises trying to be cloud-like, and just for the general purpose, why are binaries important? Why should, they, why should the general public, how would you talk about what it is a binary? Well, <laughs> I'll try. Um, so I think that the main difference is that binaries are, are more like, and maybe it's a, a, a basic metaphor, but binaries are more like fresh food, unlike a freeze food. Your source code is freezed. You are not allowed to touch it, you are not allowed to clean it, you are not allowed to change it. Your 1.0 will be my 1.0, and it's kind of a freeze food. And this, this is why, and therefore, Git and other, other players in this market are so important. And, uh, and, and we see how Bitbucket with Atlassian and GitHub are, are growing and still playing a significant role. Binaries are different. Binaries is the fresh food, something that you keep changing any 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 minute and and you build with a specific binary something and then something else and and it becomes its own an, another binary if you if i may say so and uh, and i think that the flexibility that you need to gain when you go um, on a full automation and a full integration is the flexibility that you can get on the binary level you cannot get it on the code level and therefore Binary is playing a very significant role in, in the cloud era and in the, uh, in the DevOps era. So it allows for extensibility of source code. Yes. In, in a way, what you're saying. It's just right. you can eat the, the frozen food or you can chop up your own organic meal. Exactly. Yourself, okay, I get that. So, okay, final question for you. Thanks for coming, I appreciate the, 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 uh, the 101 on binaries there. Um, people don't always just go on, on, on Wikipedia and look at other definitions on, on Stack Overflow and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, what is the customer value proposition for JFrog? Why should I work with you? What's the main reason if you have 4,000 customers? What's driving them to use you? Is it just convenience? Is it scalability? All of the above? Just take a minute to explain what's, why customers go to you. And if people don't work with you, why should they work with you? So I think that the biggest challenge today is that uh, you want to, to treat binaries as first level citizens. And instead of having an NPM repository, Docker registry, Maven repository, Piper repository, and there is no single organization that will have just one repository, you can have it all with JFrog. The second thing, we are um, the providers of uh, highly available solution to protect your data centers. So if you don't want your thousand developers sitting down waiting for the binary repository to be up and running and to allow their environment, then you probably want to- Productivity secure. right there, Productivity just one, many and reasons. efficiency, absolutely. We are also providing a tool that secure your binary flow and a platform that distribute your binaries. We take binaries very seriously. Over two billion downloads a month on Bintray, our um, distribution hub. And, uh, and we work with the community and for the community. We are developers by ourselves coming from the open source community. So it's all bottom up and community friendly. Show me great, great commentary. I want to just get a personal, take your, you know, uh, JFrog hat off for a minute, put your kind of like uh, developer, executive, industry expert hat on. And share with the audience your view on the developer market. I mean, there's been a lot of, um, negative press around the programmer lately and all these things and but you know the, the trends are clear right that you have massive growth in open source okay comment on the role open source plays as it goes into some argue fifth generation fourth fifth generation i remember one first generation i was coding on i mean those were the days but different it's changed you have so much code it's a, it's really a, a party right now in open source there's so much good stuff happening I mean, Google's donating TensorFlow, all these people putting real big libraries out there to code on. It's Kubernetes. A, Kubernetes is just so awesome. People get really, system guys specifically love what's going on in the cloud. But cloud is exploding a lot of opportunities to IoT and AI. What's the developer market like, like right now? Just share your thoughts. What's the sentiment? What's the excitement? What are the young kids doing? What are the, some of the big things that you see happening? Well, from from business perspective, what we see in the market is developers, first of all, taking decisions. They they hear their managers coming with the pain, 
and expected to solve it. And, it, and the bottom-up process is something we never saw in the market. The last five, six years, we see more and more developers kind of educating their managers with how to do it and how to do it faster. The second thing, and this so is... So bottom-up's happening now, you're saying? Happening for the, for the last five years, and it's, Getting it's, it's growing. The second thing we see in the cloud, you see it more than I am, um, Google and Amazon and Microsoft and, and Red Hat, everyone, everyone want a piece of the cloud. Oracle now just announced uh, two days ago, three days ago. Everyone want a piece of the cloud and everybody understand that the data traffic comes from developers. It's not individuals, it's communities. The open source community is giant and it's a very, very, very important player in the data traffic of what we call the, the cloud highway. And the community is a very most important piece, you would agree with that, right? I mean, we're very community focused. That's the key, right? Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean that's. I think I think the world will will be developer um, uh, indoctrinated with basically developer premises across all business. So it's not a department anymore. It's permeating all through organizations. Right. Developer life and also impact our user experience. You know, people like yeah. you know um, simple people that doesn't understand code. Yeah. They're not yeah. contributing to the open source world. Yeah. Still need software updates. And competitive analysis are talking yeah. about that. How fast can you release? Well, Stu Miniman and Dave Vellante and Peter Burris and I always talk about the community is the key in an open source. You guys have been very successful in the community. Uh, congratulations, and obviously we're very community focused with our content with theCUBE. Um, if you like theCUBE, check us out at cube.net. Uh, give us a call, come in the studio. If you're a thought leader, love to chat with you. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. More thought leadership coverage in Palo Alto here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back, thanks for watching.